carbon. Have you ever wondered why this one element is getting so much attention and why whole chapters in science textbooks are dedicated to it? It's not only because of its bling status, its educational importance, or for its culinary magic. The simple answer is that without carbon, life wouldn't exist, at least not in the shape and form as we know it. And for life to persist, we depend on a constant cycle and conversion of carbon-containing molecules. What makes carbon so special in the first place is all about its chemistry. Located here at number 6 in the periodic table, it belongs to the category simply referred to as non-metals. It has 4 electrons in its outer shell, a shell that would strive to fill up to 8. This is important in carbon's ability to bond with other elements and build hydrocarbon chains and so-called organic molecules. Carbon is the main building block in all organic matter. This basically means everything alive or derived from living material. Organic molecules are part of most life-dependent chemical reactions, involving everything from DNA to energy to proteins. And what they all have in common is the presence of carbon linked in one way or another to hydrogen, but spiced up with several other elements as well. And even if we call it the carbon cycle, meaning that there's no real start or finish, it makes sense for several reasons to start looking at it from the air. The air contains a mixture of gases, of which a small percentage is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the few molecules containing carbon that is not considered an organic compound. But as plants perform photosynthesis, converting the energy in sunlight into stored chemical energy, carbon dioxide and water are pulled in and gets converted into new organic molecules a type of plant sugars. It's these sugars that then become the fuel for most life on the planet and the life-supporting cycle of carbon continues. From this step, the carbon can take one of a few different pathways in the cycle. The stored energy can be utilized by organisms for various cellular processes in what is referred to as cellular respiration either by the plants themselves in order to survive and grow, with the result of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide being released back into the atmosphere again. Another fate is that the plant gets eaten by us or another animal and becomes fuel for our cellular processes. The energy that was chemically stored through photosynthesis into carbon-based organic molecules is now able to do all kinds of things, like physical activity, building complex molecules, converted into new storage molecules, and some of the carbon is exhaled out into the atmosphere again as carbon dioxide, a byproduct from cellular respiration. Alternatively, when plants or animals die, decomposing organisms take over and feed on the dead material. Through their activities, the organic molecules are yet again picked apart and utilized by the organism for various energy-depending processes, and carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere and the cycle begins again. But there are a couple of steps to the carbon cycle that we haven't mentioned, because this cycle also has a couple of end stops, at least temporary ones. And today, some of these are more important than ever. Occasionally, dead material gets trapped either underground, in frozen permafrost, or in deep water sinks before it can get decomposed. This essentially makes this carbon unavailable, and if it remains unavailable for a long time, it kind of gets taken out of the current carbon balance. If we then all of a sudden reintroduce this carbon again, the new balance can get disturbed. Fossil fuels are one example where organic matter has been locked away for millions of years and as they are now brought back to the surface, the added carbon dioxide to the atmosphere is affecting the climate. This is because carbon dioxide is what is called a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases can absorb and emit heat radiation. And as the heat is emitted, it gets emitted out in all directions. The result is that heat that otherwise would have been reflected back out through the atmosphere now stays and kind of gets trapped in the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases are not all bad. In fact, they are essential in the atmosphere to maintain a livable climate on our planet. But when more carbon dioxide gets released from burning fossil fuels, the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere traps more heat in the atmosphere, resulting in a changing climate on our planet something that we're already experiencing the effects of in dramatic ways.
But as much as carbon's role in the current climate discussion is getting much attention, carbon is now also showing promising signs to be one of the solutions to many of our technology challenges. For example, with the discovery of graphene, Graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms that scientists believe could be hugely important for future products, from lightweight materials to electronic components. All in all, one thing seems certain, the last chapter about carbon seems far from written yet. There is no doubt that carbon deserves its own chapter in any chemistry textbook, since it's almost a symbol for everything alive. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.